Hi everybody, this is Jim Egan, head of school, Synapse School, with a Friday update. Busy week, Valentine's Day, uh, we had major assemblies, we had sports going on. Today, there was a sink hosted lunch for staff. Thank you so much, parents, volunteers, for bringing that in. TK had a feast over in building number two, which I was invited to. I spent time there getting to know families a little better, having a great time with teacher Mickey and Natasha. That was superb. Uh, I just got back from a, uh, a chaperone uh, adventure, a field trip to Life Moves uh, with eighth graders in their community-based learning class that Andy put together. There's so much going on. The calendar's packed. Look at the um, there's a newsletter, there are events coming up. Obviously the lab is coming. That's what we're really focusing on now. If you go to building number one, you will see multiple structures being built. It's getting a little hectic in a good way there. The buzz is picking up. So we need a break before it really takes off and that's next week. We have our February break. Uh, have a great time, have some rest. If you're going up to the weather, so to speak, in the mountains, um, drive carefully, enjoy it. You're probably gonna have to swim through uh, crowds of people while you're there if you're staying local like me. Uh, enjoy it too. Have a good time. Get some rest. Teachers recharge because when we get back, it really picks up for us as a school. So if you're new to the community, parents, uh, we're heading into Interactive Lab and the campus is really going to start to come alive. And this is where we talk about um, entering into a sprint with the kids, right? There's ebbs and flows uh, to a calendar and to a week or into a trimester and for synapse. This is really the crescendo up to the big event, which is our interactive lab, which is coming up. Uh, okay, what else can I tell you? Well, uh, I, can, I can tell you this about our map testing, right? We embarked on new assessments this fall, and we just did our second round of map testing in math, in uh, language usage, and reading. And I was talking to Tom, lower school math specialist, and Katie, lower school head, uh, about the results. and. Uh, as Tom said, this amount of high achievement and high growth is exceptional. So what am I talking about? Well, this is what I'm talking about. The entire school, right? That means K-7 for the testing. Uh, the growth was at 80%, 80% growth rate. The achievement is already at 90%, right? So that's, that's for the macro, for the 300 plus kids that are here. That is extraordinary to have our kids uh, uh, as a school be at the 90th percentile and still growing from there. As he said, this is like Steph Curry still getting better. It's almost weird, right? <laughs> that, that, that this can be happening. Uh, and there are lots of questions that come out of this. Is it the population of kids? Is it the environment that we created here? Is it, um, building leadership, as they say. Is it the head of school or the principal? Um, and uh, what I do know, it's it's just great news for us as a community. Uh, the data is clear. Um, we are creating um, kids that are not only competent, but they are highly competent in these domains, uh, which are so important for learning in all aspects of life and in school. And they're continuing to grow. That's the other piece of it, that it's not stagnant. Uh, and sure, there are certain kids that have growth areas and there are certain classes that are a little higher than others, that's fine. But as a school, um, that's, this is just exceptional news. Now, um, what I think is really driving this, I, I truly believe this, and this is where we put the majority of our resources, um, the, the driver for this growth and this achievement is really about the teacher. And not just any teacher, um, but the expert teacher. And so I was reading um, a report, a bit of research that came out of um, John Hady or Hattie, I can never remember how to pronounce it, University of Auckland. Uh, the paper is called Teachers Make a Difference. What is the research evidence? And the evidence is really, really clear that the teacher does make the difference. You've heard these Synapse parents, Synapse teachers talk about this. Uh, that that we feel the impact is felt most prominently in the classroom for the student when you have expert teachers surrounded by expert colleagues. It's just quite that that simple, and that we are moving the resources resources of the school in that into those into those classes into those spaces, 
right? Um, but okay, what does it mean to be an expert teacher? I think you need to really identify what, what matters. And so what uh, the research is, is saying, at least you know, uh, Hattie's research, is that um, there is a difference between an expert teacher and an experienced teacher, right? So he's reviewed um, so many, um, you know, sort of, sort of studies, right? I think there's just been a massive amount of um, data that he's collected. And what they've found and what they've identified, there are five major dimensions of excellence for teachers, right? Expert teachers can identify essential representations of their subject, can guide learning through classroom interactions, can monitor learning and provide feedback, can attend to effective attributes, and can influence student outcomes. And then he breaks these five dimensions down into 16 um, prototypical attributes, and I'm not gonna go through all of them, um, but I do wanna point out um, a couple, because teachers, as he says, you know, they account for 30% of the variance of student learning, right? That's, that's you know, the other areas, right? Home, school, heads of school, principals, peer effects, they all have an impact, but the teacher accounts for 30% uh, of, of the variance. That's the largest by far, right? Whereas uh, 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 peers is, I think it's five to 10% of the variance. Schools, uh, about the same. Uh, home, five to 10% as well. When you're talking about um, student learning and achievement, okay? So um, attending to effective attributes, expert teachers, quite frankly, have high respect for students, right? They have relationships with them. Uh, they're involved in their lives. They're caring for their students, willing to be receptive to what the student needs. They're not attempting to dominate. They're not rule focused uh, in situations. Um, I think too often, from my experience, that, it, that uh, too often experienced teachers tend to create um, distance from students, right? It's not that they're, uh, they, they don't necessarily, I think in my experience, do it intentionally, but over time it becomes about their class, their material, uh, the bar that they set. Uh, and um, that doesn't mean that they're experts, it just means they're experienced, right? So the manner in which a teacher treats students has um, a profound effect, the, the research is showing. Right, uh, so that that's a huge part of why we do what we do here in terms of SEL. Right, that's that's just massive. Now, the expert teacher also adopts a problem-solving stance to their work. So let me explain. The expert teacher, more often than the experienced teacher, seeks further information, whereas experienced teachers focus more on directly available data. Experts are more focused on solving problems with respect to the individual student and their performance in the class, whereas the experienced teacher generally focus their decisions on the entire class. So the key notion here, right, is that of flexibility. The expert teacher is flexible. Experts are more opportunistic. They're more flexible in their teaching methods. They take advantage of new information, quickly bringing new interpretations and representations of the problem to light. It is this flexibility, the research shows, and not merely the knowledge, experience of possible scenarios that makes the difference, that flexibility. Those are hallmarks of uh, synapse, right? We are adaptive, we are flexible, our theme this year is iteration. This is absolutely essential to our uh, learning environment, but certainly how teachers have to operate here in this, in this space. And they've got to have relationships with kids. They've got to put them front and center. That's the that's really the foundation of all that all schools should be doing, quite frankly, in my opinion. But um, that's certainly what we do. And um, again, expert teachers, back to this idea of expert versus experienced. Again, you can be experienced and an expert, but it doesn't mean because you are experienced, you are an expert. Expert teachers, they differ, right? And the way they represent their classrooms the degree of challenge and challenges that they present to students and most critically in the depth of processing that their students attain. Students who are taught by expert teachers exhibit an understanding of the concepts targeted in instruction that is more integrated, more coherent, and, a, and at a higher level of abstraction than the understanding achieved by other students. So this is a big study. Um, you can find it online and um, it is uh, 
evidence backing what we do here. We believe in our teachers. We set a high bar for them. So they set high bars for students. Uh, we take care of them. We care about them as individuals. So they take care and care uh, for the individuals in their classrooms, which are students, right? It's pretty simple. So we're really proud about our focus uh, as a school, uh, how we target our teacher PD, right? It, the past couple of years, it's been on the teaching of uh, literacy, the teaching of mathematics, and how we assess them. And then it's uh, SEL, PBL, project-based learning, and innovation, creativity, how that, how that manifests. And so as Tom says, because I asked him, what does he think is going on here? He think, thinks uh, at Synapse, it's the combination of tremendous teaching done by expert teachers in a culture that is safe, compassionate, and comforting. It's the combination of SEL and uh, academics. That, that notion that you can't have both, that there's a trade-off, actually, for one and the other. We've been trying to crack the code on this for 10 years. We're starting to find out through data that we are, we are actually um, changing uh, that perception, that you can be highly academic and you can be a highly relational school that's about uh, emotional intelligence too. Okay, that's it. Have a great break. Enjoy your week off and um, see you next, see you soon. Okay, take care.